Church. It's Saturday morning. We're glad you're here to have a daily devotion with Donnie. In chapter number four of 1 Thessalonians, we want to read uh, the first eight verses. The Apostle Paul begins the beat of his uh, letter as he talks about practical issues. He says, finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk, that is how you ought to live, and to please God. And so I've talked to you about how you ought to live your life out and how you can be pleasing to God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. When Paul came the first time, he gave them commandments. We are Christians that do not live underneath the Old Testament law, but Christ has given commandments. And uh, we need to look at the New Testament and find out the commandments that Christ and his apostles gave us, and we need to live according to those. Verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. You have no doubt about this. This is God's will for every Christian. This is God's will, your separation, your sanctification being set apart, your consecration to Christ. Now, how does that flesh out? That you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who is also giving us the Holy Spirit. Paul said, well, I was with you. I shared with you the commandments of the Lord Jesus and that you need to be sanctified. That's always God's will, not to be like the Gentiles or like the world, like the unbelievers, but you need to be separate and different. And one of the main ways that that is expressed is through sexuality. It seems like every time Paul had to deal with sins of the flesh, he always began with sexual sins because that's the hardest and the most common uh, for people to overcome. Now, he says that, that we are to abstain from sexual immorality. That means any kind of sexual immorality. He doesn't enumerate it here. He does in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He breaks down the various kinds. But here it's just a general word. It doesn't matter if it's fornication or adultery or homosexuality or bestiality or whatever may be out there, pedophilia. Whatever's out there, he said, we are not to be involved in that as Christians. In Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 4, it says, Marriage is honorable among all and the marriage bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Jesus gave us the uh, pattern in chapter 19 of Matthew that it's one man, one woman, even as God said in the very beginning. They come together, they come become one flesh with a covenant relationship. And then and only then are we to be involved in any kind of sexual intimacy. So what the Bible's definition uh, for our sexuality is abstinence before marriage and fidelity within marriage. That's it. And anything else is not according to the will of God. God wants us to walk in sanctification, he said, not in uncleanness. Anytime you're involved in sexual immorality of any kind, and that would even include, according to Jesus, the lusting after someone in your heart, which would involve pornography and many other things, that when you're involved in those things, then you are not in the will of God, that you are uh, breaking the law of God, the command of God. And notice he says in that last part, he who rejects this does not reject man. You're not rejecting my teaching. You're not disrespecting me. But God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Your body is God's vessel. You belong to him. You, your body is the temple of the living God. He's given the Spirit of God to you, and therefore you need to be sanctified you, you, you're bought with a price. He owns you. Therefore, glorify him with your body in the area of sexual matters and also in your spirit that matters of spiritual nature. And make sure that you serve the Lord fully and faithfully in this area. 
Let us pray together. Father, we know we live in a very lustful world. We live in a very pornographic world. It's hard for us, even if we drive down the road, not to see things that uh, are difficult to, to not get caught up in. And so, Father, we pray that you'll help us to guard the windows of our souls, uh, to guard our minds and our hearts so that we'll not enter into temptation. Do not allow the evil one to, to lead us in these things. And if there's someone who's listening right now who is on the verge of getting involved in something that will destroy their lives, I pray, Father, draw them back from the brink of destruction. Help them and encourage them. Bless our marriages, and I pray, Father, that you'll help us to live in such a way that we glorify you in this area of sexuality. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.